Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Ivona and today I will not be singing. Uh, there will be music, but I won't be singing. Uh, instead, I'm going to be talking, so I'm doing something different. Um, recently, I had a school project for a class about music and technology and um, we had to make a kind of experiment. So of course I knew I had to make a song because that's what I do. Um, I settled on the idea of making a song out of household materials and I wanted to make a song in the lo-fi style. Maybe you've noticed I really like lo-fi music. Um, so yeah, using household materials would be like the ultimate lo-fi, low quality music. Uh, so I thought it would be nice to show this project and how I made everything and uh, my, of course, the final product. Um, so I'll just run through all the different instruments and um, how I made them and talk a bit about the editing process as well. I don't know if any of you are really interested in that, but I'll just go through it very quickly. So yeah, make sure you stick around to the end to hear the final product. So after a little bit of thinking and research, I uh, came down to a list of uh, instruments that I would make. Um, a record player, a guitar, um, bell, drums. Oh, and a shaker. The idea for the record player was actually the thing that really got the ball rolling on this project because I thought that having some kind of classical music as the base for the song would be perfect because it sort of fits in with the lo-fi theme and then of course you have the record scratch sounds that are always in lo-fi hip-hop. So I went to the store to find some records that would work. Uh, for the song. So I bought these three records, but ultimately I would only use this one. It has Debussy's Clair de Lune, which was perfect for a chill, relaxing, lo-fi type song. I bought the other records to test out the record player and also because I liked how they looked. <laughs> how to make a record player. Warning, this method will permanently damage the record, hence why I bought very secondhand records. If you want to try this, which I recommend because it is fun, don't take one from your grandfather's special collection. You will need a turntable, a piece of paper, a needle, and tape. Optional, sunglasses and headphones. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Funny enough, out of all the materials I had to find for this project, I thought, I thought the turntable was going to be the hardest one, but it ended up being the easiest. It was the first thing I found. The first. And then I also had to get rubber bands, but those were the hardest to find. Like I went to five or six different stores, but I will come back to the rubber bands later. Anyway, here you see me struggling to roll the paper into a cone shape, taping it into place, and then taping a needle to the end. Then I place the record in the middle of the turntable. If you decide to try this yourself, make sure you place the record right in the center of the turntable and try to be as accurate as possible. Now comes the hard part, placing the needle in the groove and making music come out. I have to say I was not expecting this to work and was really surprised when it did. Oh my god, it worked! <laughs> now that you've gone through all the effort of putting that together and recording more than an hour of the record, Throw it all away because it's worthless, you can't use any of it. Moving on to the other instruments because I still had a project to complete and couldn't turn in nothing. My new bass was my guitar. This composed of a paper box, rubber bands, chopsticks, glue, and this Coca-Cola bottle cap as a pick. I discovered that if you stretch the rubber bands at different lengths you get different pitches, so I cut into the box and wrapped the rubber bands around the box and inserted them into these cuts. I also glued these chopstick pieces to the box so that I could pluck the strings more easily. I didn't really pick out a specific pitch for each rubber band, I just kind of stretched them at different lengths and then made a tune out of them. Next I made the drums, a kick drum which was an empty tin can with a rubber band over it, and this box which I hit with my hairbrush for more of a snare sound.
Finally, for the shaker, I put rice in an empty toilet paper roll and covered the ends with paper and rubber bands. And for the bell, I hit a tin can with one of the chopstick ends from earlier. So I finished recording the sounds and, well, let's say they were not nice. I'm, I'm honestly not sure why I expected rubber bands and tin cans to, that rhymed, uh, to, <laughs> to uh, sound good. Yeah, when I put them together, it sounded very thin and you could really hear the, like, the snapping sound of the rubber band really loudly over the actual, the actual musical sound. Yeah, it was hardly recognizable as music, so I decided to take an extra step to make the instruments that I made sound much closer to the original instruments that I wanted. So the main editing that I did was a bit of EQing on everything. For the guitar, I added a plug-in so it makes it sound like a, an electrical guitar, which is not what I was originally going for, but it made it sound a little more decent. So I used the guitar in multiple ways. I used it as like a main um, tune and then I had harmonies, so I, I you know, edited the same line and then put as harmonies. Um, and I also used it as a bass line, so I only recorded one sound for the bass and then just edited multiple notes with that one thing, with that one note. And then the other really big change I made was to the kick drum, which did not sound nearly low enough to be a kick drum, so I completely pitched it down and yeah, made it as close to a uh, kick drum as I could. But I'm not done. I realized I forgot to add a very obvious instrument. I actually thought of it before and then just completely forgot to add it in. I forgot glass. I remember as a child that I would be walking down the streets and you would have those street musicians who had those tables full of glasses, like wine glasses or cups or whatever, filled with water, different amounts of water. And I would just be so impressed by their their skills and they would play like the Star Wars theme or the Harry Potter theme and I was, it was very cool. Uh, so yeah, I thought, I remembered that and I thought I could use that in the song. So I decided to add glass water into the song and extend it just a little bit longer. I, I sort of made it the base of like the second part of the song. Uh, the second part is kind of a remake of the Get to Work 2020 song that I released last week. But yeah, overall I had actually a lot of fun working on this project, especially for a school project. You don't really get to do super creative things all the time. so. This was a, a really nice breath of fresh air and I, and I felt this childlike wonder when I, when I worked on the record player even though I didn't get to really use it. But yeah, it was, uh, it was really fun. So yeah, um, I'll just play the song now um, and um, you know, a little lo-fi edit to add to the whole aesthetic. aesthetic. And enjoy! So that was the song. Let me know what you thought of my um, creation and let me know if you think there's something else I could have added to it or changed it. Also let me know what you think of this format of a video. I've never done this kind of thing before. I 
I wasn't really planning on doing these kinds of videos where I talk to the camera, but I thought this would be a, you know, fun thing to show. So yeah, let me know if you like it um, or if you think it's weird. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so if you do, please give this video a thumbs up and remember to subscribe and hit that bell icon and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, okay. Bye-bye.